Hello guys and welcome to a new tip tutorial from MotoCookie.com. My name is Justin and I'll be showing you how to create your own HDR image with the help of Moto and Photoshop. Now I have set up here a small scene. Uh, since this is a tip tutorial I don't want it to last too long. So I will try to keep everything under 10 minutes. So I have a small scene set up here, basic studio scene. I also have a few uh, lights uh, as polygons set up and if we go here to the render you can see how this renders out. The lights are basic lights, they are set above the base shader because uh, I don't want them to... Uh, this is some remnants of the of a test. Okay, so the lights are set above the base shader because I don't want them to cast shadows or receive shadows. Send, uh, they're basically they are all the same, just the color differs and their their uh, luminous intensity is set accordingly to their position. So this would be my uh, key light, uh, this would be a, a top light, something neutral, and this would be a fill light on the back. Now this renders fairly quick, but this is not the uh, purpose. This is uh, it's rendering just to illustrate the difference between the light, uh, the, the physical. Well, it, they're not physical, but the lights that we created and the HDR image that we will create. And you will see that the image will be very much different. Uh, that's because uh, HDR images don't react as normal lights and they're basically one image. So this this feature in Moto, maybe it was not, uh, maybe it is not known by a lot of people, because it's it's the type of feature that's there in case you need it. So not many people uh, use this, but it's uh, it's it's a very very good feature because sometimes you may need to create your own HDR image for a client that uh, say you 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 need to shoot a product a product but you can't uh or you don't have the HDR image of the studio or the location so you can recreate it well it it's a bit of a, of a foggy subject as it is so i'm just going to skip this so uh, the 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 create an HDR image option in Moto is is very very simple but not many people use it because well let's be honest people like to have control and they have uh, and they like to have control on the lights and this is one of the reasons that you won't find uh, too many people using HDR images to light their studio uh, their object and I'm talking HDR images alone okay so I have the lights created here I have my camera and in order to create an H HDR image uh, you basically need another camera that I duplicated and the most important thing is the projection type here usually it's set to perspective and for an HDR image you need to set it to spherical so spherical is okay <coughs> and we need to uh, set the focal length to something neutral and uh, the, the most neutral value it's the default value of 35 millimeters now I w it was set to 65 mill millimeters uh, because of uh, my original camera that I duplicated so <coughs> excuse me uh, in order to see the result we need to switch here to our camera and uh, you see I already have from my test an HDR on the background so this is basically the output now what you want to do in order to achieve uh, well to, to achieve a result close to the original with the lights on you have to over saturate your uh, light colors so in my first test the saturation of this was around 0.2 uh, that would give us a very good result in the preview but it was barely noticeable in the 
in the HDR image. So you need to oversaturate your colors a bit. Okay, let's switch back to my uh, spherical cam. And you basically need to hide the, the cube and the teapot, and you're left with just that. And now for an HDR image, uh, usually it's it's a spherical environment, you need to have uh, a wide uh, frame. So something like uh, 1500 by 750 should work. So the, the, the height needs to be half the width for this to, to map properly on a sphere. So once you set that up, uh, make sure you have your camera set to spherical, make sure you have your render camera set to the spherical cam, uh, you would want uh, anti-aliasing not at the default 8 but at 16 samples excuse me I'm having uh, some problems here <laughs> okay so at 16 samples and that's about it and now all you need to do is render and it's gonna render pretty fast and oh uh, another thing excuse me another thing that I forgot is that on the final color output Instead of 2.2 uh, gamma, you need to have uh, a gamma of 1. So if we render this, we need to save it. And we're going to save it as a uh, radiance high dynamic range. We're going to call it HDRI. Hit OK. And then we're going to go in here. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to bring this into Photoshop. And we're going to get just that. Now, see we changed the gamma to uh, let me just show you in a second so we changed the gamma to 1 uh, you see the image that we rendered here it's a bit darker than this uh, that's the reason we changed the gamma to 1 because uh, high dynamic range images have a different uh, bit depth so at least that's what I uh, think it is if anyone has a more technical explanation please feel free to share so we we set the gamma to 1 and now in Photoshop uh, you see we're not really getting the color that we usually that, that we originally have in the in the 3d program in Moto in this case so we need to blur this a bit so we're gonna go to a Gaussian blur and now you see the color of the image not really sure if you can see in the video but you should uh, the, the color of the lights starts coming through even if we blur them more you can see that it really uh, shows the true color of the images now you don't of the lights now you don't want this blur to be extremely high uh, I wouldn't go above 10 so usually between 6 or 10 I'm gonna go with 8 here I'm gonna click OK and I'm just gonna save it and now I'm going to bring it into Modo Oops, this is actually Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to bring it into Moto in my environment settings. I'm going to change my camera back to my camera. And same for the render camera. I'm going to change my uh, resolution to half HD. Okay, teapot cube. Now we need to uh, hide the lights. Okay, and we need to turn up our gamma back so 2.2 okay and now this is the tricky part when you use an environment image it actually it maps it on a sphere that represents the environment so some of the lights may end up in here uh, actually behind the object and they may not be visible to reflections and one more thing we need to do is we set we need to set this to spherical on the Y and you see we're getting some some light information but it's not quite what we had uh, in the original example with normal lights so now you can probably <coughs> play with the gamma of this image to get what you want to get a brighter image but what I found is that if uh, if we go here and we hide the floor okay we're gonna get something that's much much closer 
to what we had but uh, we don't have a floor so the option would be to set that floor to be a shadow catcher uh, material as I had it set pr previously now another thing you can do is you can play with the Y rotation something like that or you can uh, again play with the gamma maybe set it something lower and we need to make sure that this is showing because at the moment I think we're not really seeing what we're supposed to see let's just rotate this around okay we need to center our texture locator and you see we, we have some of the lights already coming through here and we need to move this up or actually uh, down so the center line needs to be on the center with the uh, the object basically the, the floor that was before this and we are having some of the lights coming through but uh, as I said the result won't be uh, identical it will be very very different but of course with uh, with tweaking and playing around with the settings and stuff you can uh, you can achieve what you want maybe you can go in here to hue saturation and maybe saturate the image but of course not overdo it so something like this maybe you can go to actually need to get levels and maybe increase the contrast a little but again it's it, this is subject to uh, tweaking as I said see now, now we're getting uh, a lot more of the light color information coming through and maybe you can move this in order to achieve the the best possible result okay play around with the gamma some more and stuff like that see if we if we rotate this to where the yellow light is supposed to be probably on that side but anyway uh, this this is a nice feature uh, that Moto has and most people probably don't even know about so thanks for watching and feel free to comment.